Hey there, uh, I've gotten a couple questions about solving for the implied volatility of a put option. The code that I had uh, written originally was just for a call option. Uh, and I'm going to do that. I'm just going to quickly modify that script and show you how it's done. But again, I want you guys to think of this as a more generic problem, in this case, root finding. So I'm going to just make up a simple equation. We're going to solve that equation um, just by modifying the, that call implied volatility script. And then we will go and do specifically a um, implied, implied volatility for a put option. So, uh, yeah, let's get to it. Just to show how easy it is to modify that code to do more generic functions, let's try to find the root of this function, f of x equals e to the x minus 5x. And here's a plot of it on the left. And you can see this function actually has two roots. So the Black-Scholes thing is actually uh, easier because it only has one root. So we want to find the point where, these cross, uh, where this function crosses 0. Uh, explicitly said this is the equation we're trying to solve. We're trying to solve this for x. And to do that, we're going to need the, uh, to actually code the function itself and its derivative. And then we just basically copy and paste the while loop and make a couple tweaks to that to get, to get the answer. So this is really easy to code up. We're just going to import numpy, uh, numpy as np as usual. And let's code up our function. So we're going to, just going to call that first function f. So def f of x. And this just returns. Uh, uh, mp.expx minus 5 times x. And we're also going to need a derivative function, so let's call it df dx. It's also a function of x and returns uh, e to the x, mp.expx. Uh, and the derivative of that is just minus 5. Done. So there we go. Those are the two functions we need. And before moving on, let's just plot that. So let's add in our um, import of the plotting libraries. And then I'm just going to copy and paste in from some test code here. Save this. Go to our Python console and run it. So that's, our, that's what our function looks like. So that, that's all working. OK, so let's comment this out here. We don't need that for the moment. And now we're just going to borrow heavily on that implied volatility code. So that code was in the file findvol.py. And let's see, we're going to go to the beginning of the file. Uh, these are not, uh, we don't need that. We don't need that. We're going to need our tolerances thing. We're going to need just to keep run, you know, keep keep track of the counts just to make sure we don't get an infinite loop. So let's uh, copy this. Let's put it in our code down here. Um, we're going to need an initial guess for our root. So let's just uh, put in a uh, not down here. Let's put it up here. Initial guess. And we'll call the um, we'll call this R, and we'll call it, we'll have an initial guess of five, say. Now let's just copy our while loop. We're going to have to make a couple adjustments here. Okay, so count maximum iterations. Um, are we're going to have a, we're going to have we're going to have to rename this as um, R. So that's our initial guess, just like our initial guess for the volatility was vol. So let's just call this variable orig R. We don't need any of this d uh, d stuff here. We're going to need the function value, but that's just our f of R. Let's save it. Uh, calculate Vega. We don't need Vega. We, Vega is the derivative of the option price with respect to volatility. So what we need here is we need to calculate the derivative, but we have that function. Let's call this variable df, and our function was df dx. So let's say df dx evaluated at the point r. So our new r is the function value function value divided by the 
uh, derivative evaluated at R, and that's also R. So let's see, this should be an R. These are just our tolerance checks. So hopefully that'll run. Let's see here. And now let's just print out print R. Any bets on uh, whether I made any mistakes here? Uh, DFDX not defined. So let's, um, we probably don't need this fine vowel code anymore. So let's go up here. Uh, oh yeah, I spelled it wrong here. So it's DFDX. Save. Run. So we got a value of 2.54 something. So let's go back here and uncomment this code. And let's put in, let's see, how do I want to do this? Let's go plt.plot. Uh, let's put our value of r here. And let's go f of r. And let's make this just a uh, black circle. So k o. Let's see. Let's run it. So there we go. There's our 2.54 whatever. That circle here. Uh, that's exactly exactly what we're looking for. Now let's just see if we can find this point over here that's just uh, just to the right of zero. So we can close that window and let's just use an initial guess of I don't know. Let's just say minus two uh, minus two should do. So let's go here. Let's go back to our window over here. Let's find our initial guess and we'll change this to minus two. Let's see what happens when we run it. There we go. That uh, value just to the right there, about 0.26 or so. Um, yeah, perfectly. So that's how easy it is to modify this code. It's, it's, it's very, very straightforward. So now let's move on to the uh, puts, uh, solving for the put volatility. So I just recorded all that and I realized the audio was screwed up well after the fact. So let's do it again. Uh, I have taken our original volatility script here. Um, and I just copied it over and called it finval underscore put. And I'm just going to use the basic script here. So this is going to have the same issues as the call script where if you try to solve for in the money option uh, volatility and the option price is less than the intrinsic value, it's going to crash. It's, I mean, go back and watch that uh, debug me script from a week or two ago uh, if you want an explanation as to why and then how to, how to deal with it. But uh, yeah, this is just a root finding problem. You just take your function and you plug it into that uh, while loop and that's basically all you have to do. So what I'm going to do is just take my call price function here, come down here, copy it, and I'm just going to call it put price. And I'm going to, uh, just to make this clear, I'm going to make that a P, P, uh, save it. I have also brought up the uh, Wikipedia article on Black Scholes, so uh, all we need to do is modify that uh, equation to, to reflect this equation here. So let's go to this nd1 uh, times the stock price. So that needs to be minus n, and it needs to be minus d1. So let's go back here. This is that term here. So this is a minus. I need to put a minus here. Uh, I believe this needs to be a plus now, if memory serves. Yes, it does. And, 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 this needs to be a minus D2. So does that look right? Looks good to me. Um, so now all we have to do is swap in our functions. Here's our parameters from last time. Let's deal with an out of the money option. So let's make this, instead of 105, make this a 95 uh, strike option. $100 stock price, 95 $100 stock price, 95 strike price, 30 days to expiration, uh, risk-free rate of 1%, and let's name the, make this a P again to explicitly be clear here. We'll keep the same price, $2.30, it uh, doesn't matter. So all this is the same. Uh, our initial guess, we're just going to guess it's 50%, uh, we don't know. Uh, yeah, so all we have to do now is this has to change to put. And C0 needs to change to P0. The Ds are the same. 
Vega for the option, that's our derivative term, uh, is the same for calls and puts, so we don't need to touch that. All of this is the same. This is our update um, thing. This is our tolerance uh, determination. And we print out the uh, price. So let's see if this actually works here. Uh, so I need to CD to that directory, and I believe it's in the... Uh, oh, I hate Windows. CD... Sig home my misspelled last name uh, numerical methods oh I really do hate Windows I should just do this on the Linux machine which would be a lot easier and Python find val put dot pi there we go uh, 39 almost 40 percent implied volatility it takes three iterations pretty pretty straightforward so that's all there is to it it's really uh, straightforward uh, I want you to think of this as solving a particular type of math problem in this case root finding solving for a variable in an equation that you can't normally get at um, you know through regular algebraic means um, rather than solving for a specifically a call implied volatility a put implied volatility uh, I want you to think of it in the more generic generic terms so yeah, I think we'll go back to curve, uh, curve fitting next week, and until then, take care.